type of um, method this is is a starter combined starter finisher. So we're not using, still not using that separate starter and finisher thing. This is still one combined thing that makes cells. Utilizes the swarming impulse because there's going to be a ton of nurses in this thing. It's going to be very crowded. Um, you can scale this to backyard beekeepers, and that's obvious because I couldn't be talking about it at this class. Um, and even though you're mucking with the production colony, you can still get honey production from that colony using this method. So for those folks that say, I want queens, but I don't want to sacrifice honey, this is something that you can employ, okay? So this is a multi-day thing. It's basically a setup day, and then 10 days later, you give them grabs, okay? So on setup day, the equipment you need on setup day, you need an extra brew box. Again, I use deeps. You can scale this for mediums. I suspect a single medium will probably work. You definitely need a queen excluder. If you don't use queen excluders in your operation, you should have queen excluders if you're making queens. If you're not using queen excluders for your honey operation, you should definitely have a few queen excluders for your queen side of your business, okay? You need at least five frames of cap brew on day one. Five frames of cap brew. So that represents a resource. So if you only have two colonies, that's a fairly significant resource, okay? But if you have six colonies, or even five colonies, each colony gives one frame of brew, easy, right? That should be fairly easy. Two, two colonies, you're probably going to struggle. You're going to set the, depends, right? I mean, if you got bees like the picture I showed in the January 9th photo, that, I could take three frames from that thing right now and uh, would not really set it back to honey production. Uh, so at setup day, on, on day 10, you're going to need an extra bottom board. You're going to need an extra top cover, and you're going to need this thing called a shaker box. It's an optional piece of equipment, but I want to tell you what it is, okay? <clears throat> a shaker box is nothing more than a regular hive body. The difference being, on the bottom of this hive body, you've screwed in a queen excluder. So the box and the queen excluder are an integral unit. They don't come apart. And another nice feature about a shaker box is on the interior of the box, you've got a strip of duct tape all the way around the interior, about an inch or so from the top of the box. The duct tape, when bees go down into this box, they're going to use this shaker box to prevent queen from going down in. Okay? So when you shake the bees down into this box, the nurse bees are going to sense that there's brood below and they're going to go through the queen excluder. And any queens that may have been on a frame that you shake are going to be stuck by the excluder. Okay, so it gives you an easy way to shake bees in without having to worry about transferring a queen. And what's the tape for? <laughs> the tape. Yes, thank you. <laughs> when you shake bees in, not all of them are going to immediately want to run down through that excluder. Some of them are going to want to crawl up. When they hit that duct tape, bees don't like walking on duct tape for some reason, even the shiny side, right? And that kind of keeps them down in the box. They'll eventually, the, the field bees will eventually fly out and go back, but they won't crawl and be bubbling over the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how do you put that duct tape on? Oops. Around the inside. Roll of duct tape on the inside of the duct tape, on the box. Okay. How far from the top? About an inch down from the top. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk, so we'll talk about the equipment. Now here's the setup. Uh, a minimum of 10 days. It has to be set up a minimum of 10 days before the grafting, right? Where this other technique this morning did not need the same lead time, okay? This was basically a day or two before. This, a full 10 days. You gotta plan ahead on this. You want to select a strong production column. Uh, so this, this is probably one of your best colonies in your yard, okay? 
should be no less than a deep and a medium full of bees. That's kind of the minimum. So scale that as you will. Uh, bigger is better, ideally two deeps and a medium. So <clears throat> it's a fairly big colony you're talking about here. You want to add a queen excluder uh, above an empty box. So add queen excluder in an empty box, pardon me. So you go to your production colony, you open the top, you put a queen excluder on. You put an empty box on top of that queen excluder on that production colony, okay? This box that you've just placed on top of that queen excluder, that will be your cell builder. Okay, so just hang with me for a moment. <clears throat> now we said we needed five frames of brood, right? You go out to colonies and you scavenge some brood, five frames. Richard Knoll takes ten frames, so that's the scale down for the mini MP. Five versus ten. You take five frames of cat brood and you put them in that empty space, that, that new box you just put on top of the cleaning excluder. Five frames of cat brood. You want, again, the burnt toast look on those frames. Cat emerging brood. <clears throat> you select frames as much brood as possible, no beads. So you go to your donor colonies, you're collecting frames of brood. You pull that frame and just shake the bead off. You can brush them down, shake the bees off that frame. No bees are being transferred, just the brood. Uh, you want, again, older cat brood that's darker. Of course, no queens are transferred. Fill the, so we have five frames. I'm assuming a 10 frame box, so there's going to be five spaces. You can either put foundation there, or you can put draw and comb. It doesn't really matter. Where do you put it? In the middle? Good point. So the five frames of brood go right in the center. Brood goes in the center. Yep, in the center. Brood is always right in the center. And fill the spaces around it with extra either comb or foundation. So why, is, why do we set this up 10 days beforehand? Excuse me, took bees time to hatch out. So there you go. What, what's that magic number that we're looking for in terms of Age of nurse bees. Six, 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 six days. days. Right. Day six, the nurse bee hits its peak production. So workers are capped for about 10 days. So six days is not going to cut it, right? right? That's from initial cap. So we're going for that burnt toast kind of look of the brood. So we're going to get a good number of bees that are going to hatch out around day five after setup. So day, you know, day six is basically our place in our grafting. So that's, that's why we're doing it 10 days ahead of time, okay? So that's what that talks about. Again, the hyperferon geo gland is peak production on six days. Um, so we target most of the bees, uh, that burnt toast frame kind of thing, uh, five to six days emergence. Uh, and I'll put them in the peak production. And any queen cells that are started on those five frames should be easily seen at that point. You should not be able to miss a queen cell. I'm confused. Wait, are you starting with a, um, a medium box and then you're putting the queen excluder and then you're putting Okay, so box. let's just back up. Yeah. So we have our production colony. Right. Okay, so right. that production colony could be two deeps, a medium, could be a deep and a medium. It's just a big column. That's what it is. That's the starting setup. Right. We go to that column, and we've, we've selected, that's, that's our target. We go to that column, pull the top off, put a cleaning scooter on it, and an empty box. And we go to our other colonies and grab the five frames that we need. They now go in that, top, that empty top box. We backfill the sides with either foundation or comb. Close it up. Remember, we're only transferring brood, no beads. Okay. Any questions about the setup here? Everyone's clear? Can you have honey supers on, or you got to take those off to? It, it can. These can go above the honey super. Okay. So the production colony. You don't really have to get into the production colony on the ten days before step. You don't. 
go down to the brew chamber or anything like that. Just, just leave it, take the lid off, take the inner cover you got, put your crane splitter out, and then the, the box with the, the new brew you just gave it. That's it. Okay. Okay? Okay. That, the last bullet you have there, that's applicable when? When are you talking about the uh, That's after the 10 days. After the 10 days. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the bees have emerged. Yeah. And at the end of the 10 day period, those queen cells should be totally obvious at that point. Any more questions? I guess this is important. There's been several questions. Maybe I've not been super clear on this. So let's just back up real quick. <coughs> so, set up the minimum 10 days before. You select a production colony, a big monster colony in your yard. Ideally, two deeps and a medium. Can be a deep and a medium. But it's a big colony, lots of bees in this colony. You add a clean square on top. This box that you've just placed on top of that excluder, that's your cell builder. It will be. It isn't right now, but it will be. In 10 days, it will be your cell builder. Add the five frames of cap brood. Make sure not to transfer clean. Fill the additional space on the outside of those five frames with either foundation or comb. Okay. Is that a, is this a good time to do foundation so that they build out foundation? They very well could. Because they very well could because you, you're doing this in the springtime basically when there's a flow on. You have a lot of bees that are looking to build comb, so they may very well pull that foundation at that point. Okay. So yeah. So now we have the thing set up ten days beforehand. We're now ready to reconfigure this column. Okay? So on this day, remember that the day 10 um, extra equipment, you need to bring a bottom board, a top cover, a shaker box. The shaker box is optional, but you have to find a queen prior to what you're about to do. Um, place the extra bottom board right next to that original <coughs> stack of bees, your production hive with the five frames on top. You take it. Bottom board, you place it right next to that colony. The thing is, though, you place the entrance of that new bottom board facing the opposite direction. So when bees leave what will now be another colony right next to the one that you're working with, when they fly, they're going to go back into the old colony. Okay? That's your bottom board facing the opposite direction. Pull the cell builder box, that top box, pull it off, set it aside. Once you've set it aside, quickly check for queen cells. Okay, that's when you check for the queen cells. Don't shake the bees off into the bottom box. You leave those nurse bees right there. So you take the entire box, no jostling, no shaking, and set it on the upturned outer cover. And then you check very carefully for queen cells, okay? Yes. Why would there be queen cells if they were all? There's a fruit. chance. You always want to just that, you know, one percentile kind of thing that there was a egg in one of those burnt toast frames. It's just, you, it's so critical that there's not going to be a queen in there that it makes sense not to check it. So just backing up real quick, then, Sean. So when you take that original box that you're putting the five frames in and put them on top of your original eye, then that top, it should be B tight, B tight on top too, so nothing can get in? Yes. Okay. It's not super critical though. It's not super critical. Okay. No, nothing is necessary. Not, I mean, now think of it, this is one big colony you started with, and you've just made it bigger. Right. So nothing's really going to bother that colony. Does it, it doesn't matter if you're putting it on top of honey supers? It does not matter. Oh. Because okay. there's, there's more to come. Oh, okay. it'll, it'll be clear why. Okay. Are there any other questions at this point? Okay, so this is day 10. We hold that top box, set it on top, upturned outer cover, and we just quickly look, see if there's any queen cells. Shouldn't be any, but we check anyway. <clears throat> now we have the original colony still there. Double deep, medium, or a deep and a medium. We disassemble that thing. We take all the boxes off that location 
and put them on that new bottom board. So you lift the boxes here, you turn around, and you put it on the bottom boxes. They're the bottom board that you set next to the colony, facing the opposite direction. Is it clear? So you move the original colony. To you the move new. the original colony to the new bottom board, right next to the where it was. It has to face the opposite direction. Place the cell builder, the one that is now sitting in the outer cover, you place that on the hive stand where it was, where the, where the parent <coughs> colony was. Entrance of that faces the same way. You haven't moved that bottom board. You haven't moved anything on the original location. It's the new bottom board and now it faces the opposite direction. Place the shaker box, if you have one, on top of that cell builder. Okay? No shaker box, then any frame that we shake into that cell builder has to be checked carefully for a clean. This is where you could, if you don't have a shaker box, you can easily shake it clean because what's going to happen now is. Um, you have to go into the parent colony. So that one that's sitting on the adjacent new stand facing the other way, we're going to get down into that colony. And what are we looking for? We're looking for nurse bees. Okay? So go into the parent colony, shake bees <laughs> into that shaker box. Shake at least five frames. The more the merrier. All you're trying, the objective you're trying to do is not reach some critical state in your cell builder. What you're trying to achieve here is not depopulate the original colony so much that they can't cover the brood they have. That's your goal. Okay, you don't want to chill the brood that's in that colony. You're going to depopulate it. Because keep in mind, not only are you going to be taking the nurse bees, but any field bees, where are they going to come back to? You're going to come back to your cell builder. So this thing is going to be massively crowded. So shake at least five frames, preferably through that shaker box. Uh, but don't totally depopulate that original colony. Because they have the queen, they have a good amount of brood. So get at least five frames of nurse bees. So basically, you leave the parent colony enough bees to cover the brood. Uh, later in the day, after you do this, you close up everything. Later in the day, you provide your cell bar with the graphs. That is it. So what are you going to see? What are you going to see? You're going to see that. That thing is going to be just rich with bees, and they're going to be mostly nurse bees, because the frames that emerged are all nurse bees. The frames that you're shaking are going to be nurse bees. You're going to have field force bees in it just to keep the heat in that thing. So this thing is going to be massive. Okay, so that's where we left off. Now, we provided the graphs, just like we did for the little nuke. We provided them graphs. Five days after the graphs, what, what happens? The cells are capped at this point, right? So now, what you do is reassemble things. You take the colony that was next to it, the original colony, and you put it back where it was. So you lift your cell builder off, you take the colony that was over there, and you recombine it into one giant stack. You add a queen excluder on top of uh, the, uh, so back in its original location, add a queen excluder on top and place the cell builder on the top. So you take the original, you pull the cell builder off, it's a single deep, you pull that cell builder off, you take the other colony that was the original colony, and you put it back on the original bottom board. 
You put a queen of scooter on top of that original column. And Do you have to, or can you just flip your bottom board around, rotate it? I mean, does it matter? This is kind of a, a twist on cloak boarding. <laughs> so there's different ways of doing this. It's kind of a uh, cloak board without a cloak board kind of thing. If that, I don't know what that means. But. Um, basically, you're trying to get the bead in a very specific location. And that's what this twisting the original parent column is. The cloak board. Right, but you said remove it and put it on the dome. But if you just turn it. You need to have the cell builder cleanless. So just simply turning the original colony is not going to get it. They're still going to be clean right. Okay. Am I following your question right? No, I thought you said remove it and place it on the original bottom board. Does it matter what bottom board it's on? Or oh, does it just matter the, the location of the, the bottom location board? Of the okay. 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 <coughs> Here's what... No. So the original colony, before we've done any manipulation, sitting there on a bottom board, we take that colony off. The new bottom board is adjacent to that colony, right, the facing the other direction. Right. So everything comes off here, gets turned around, and put on the new bottom board. So their entrance is facing the opposite direction to what it was. Right. The old bottom board remains in place, and at that point, that's where the cell builder will go. Okay. Okay. Then, after the cells are capped, this is day five after the graphs went in, they're capped, now we've got to make it into a queen right unit again. This is different than the finisher because the cells are already finished. Technically, at that point, if you had an incubator, you just harvest your cells and be done. Put them in an incubator for the remaining uh, time. But we're assuming no incubator here, so we're going to put the capped cells above a cleaning scooter. It has to be above a cleaning scooter because that's a clean right colony we're sticking back in underneath and a clean will destroy those cells. I know this is a lot of manipulation and I think it's worth it if you just go through step by step and understand the different steps and what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve super high bee density. That's the clean, the, the swarming trigger we're trying to emulate here. We're trying to get a lot of nurse bees in place, and we're doing that by first providing those five extra frames, and then shaking bees off frame. We're shaking those nurse bees, and so we've got super high density of nurse bees. We give that colony then a graft. They're going to jump on that and pull out monster cells. We allow them to cap that cell five days into it. Then we can reassemble. We take the, that cell builder off the stand, we take the original colony, put it back on its original bottom board. We take the other bottom board and move it out. And now we've got to put a queen excluder on top of that colony and put the cell builder on top of that queen excluder. Yes, Ruth. Point of clarification. So when you said you'd give them the graft, I missed if you said you gave them pollen and syrup because we only gave them capped brood and empty frames. They're getting the forager bees, which will bring some pollen, but not enough to build cells. No, that, good catch. Uh, you should if conditions warrant. If there's not a flow on, uh, you should give them something. But keep in mind right now that that box, different than this setup here, mm -hmm. is going to have all the field force. So that field force is going to be bringing resources into that cell. So that's there. enough for that us? That should be enough okay. if there's a flow on if there's pollen out there. Okay. If you try this in July, it's not probably not going to pan out for you. But in a springtime, swarm season kind of thing, you probably don't need to do anything for this thing to make queen cells. Yes, sir. I, I think we should worry about feeding the other, the main part. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. That's a good point. We so, should so give them food. The colony at risk here is not the cell builder. It's not the cells being yeah. made. It's the one you depopulate. Yes. So That's a good point. Food, a very good them. point. You need to give them enough resources mm -hmm. so they can keep them. Because you don't want to destroy the brood there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you certainly don't want to injure the queen. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a fine line there. So don't take all of these from that thing. Yes. And uh, feeding of that one may be more important. So that's a good catch, Karen. Thank you. Any other questions on so far? I mean, this thing is going to have a lot of bees in it. Mm -hmm. 
So Sean was just yes. So when you reorientate your cell builder and your original hog back in the original direction, those few bees that went out and became foragers and orientated in the north direction, say, they'll, they'll since they're so close yeah. together, they usually figure out. Okay. Yeah, you, you've, now you've taken that new bottom board that they were using temporarily. You take that new bottom board and move it out of the yard. So any queen smell or any okay. any pheromones that are on that are going to be eliminated, and it's good, it's right next to the original the right. place, so they'll find it. Okay. There may be a little disorientation for an hour or so, but uh, yeah, they'll figure that out fairly quickly. How are we doing on this? I know this is more involved than the first technique. It's just it's yeah, it's more te steps involved. I think you, you answered it with the pheromones and just on the queen, the queen smell because I couldn't figure out what the difference was. You know, why you had to lift from here to here, even though they're oriented different, if you could just do this and go like that. But you said they well, smell Well, you need a place for the cell to open, yeah. right? You need that to sit on something. Yeah. And I said, leave the old bottom board there because I want to attract as many bees into that cell builder as right. possible. Right. The new, the the parent colony is going to be on a new bottom board, so they're not yeah, going to that's be as attractive, I mean. right? Okay. That's what I mean. Yes, Richard. So just, just for me, jump ahead, I, now I can take those beautiful queen cells and put them in a new box, queen castle, anything I want. Anything you want, yes. I mean, at this point right now, I mean, you can put them in an incubator. incubator or you can put them in a nuke box. If you have your nuke box set up, you can do so. The, the thing about it is, though, they're going to do best in this um, finisher, cell builder finisher thing. So Yeah, but I mean, in, in 10 days when you harvest, so you can at, at the harvest, oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant right now, at the five, at the capped point. No, no, no. You can, I mean, you can do that, right? Because if you have a queenless nuke or one of these little mating nukes sitting around and it's populated enough, all they have to do is maintain the temperature of that cell. You don't have to feed it anymore because it's already capped. So you could technically place it right then. I generally don't. I let the, the cell builder finish everything right there. And then harvest on day 14. Yes, sir. Do you feel like this cell builder is stronger than the first one Absolutely. we talked about? Yeah. So you could go 10 to 15 grafts on this? You could do 15 easily. Okay. 15 easily on this. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a more populous cell builder. It's going to have an easily, easily handle more cells. There's going to be a lot bigger population of nurse bees in this. This works extremely well. The original thing we talked about before works extremely well, but it's going to be a little harder to kind of dial in to get the perfect cell. This is going to be a lot easier to get the perfect cell, but there's a lot more manipulation. Lots of jostling around here. So there's the trade-off right there. Yes? Are you crafting from that 